Hello everyone. Welcome to Anthropology Analytica. I am Dr. Arjun Bopanna, Anthropology Faculty at Insights IAS. In today's video, let us discuss synthetic theory of evolution. So we shall discuss it from a 15 marker or a 20 marker point of view. All right. So this is usually asked as an essay question. And uh, this question is going to be very specific. What is synthetic theory? What are the various components or what is the premise of synthetic theory, etc. So let's try to uh, see what will be the structure of this particular question. So briefly write about the context of synthetic theory of evolution. That means the background. So as you all know that there are many theories that were given to explain the evolution of uh, organisms, right? Uh, Darwin's theory, Lamarck's theory, etc. One of the most important one is the Darwin's theory. But Darwin's theory also did not uh, explain how these variations arose or it did not explain how the variations were passed on from one, uh, you know, in one generation to another, to the offsprings, how it was. So there was Darwin's had two main flaws. That means it did not explain how the variation took place and how they were uh, passed on to the next generation. <clears throat> so these two shortcomings uh, led to continuous study further uh, theories explaining evolution in 90s, 30s and 40s, etc. Many theorist theories had come uh, which were talking about evolution and different aspect of evolution, like <clears throat> the concept of isolation. Okay, the concept of isolation that was given by Wagner, the theory uh, continuity of uh, germ plasm, okay, which was given by August Wiesman. Uh, then you have a theory of uh, mutation, the theory of mutation given by Hugo Doveris, then uh, chromosomal theory of uh, inheritance. Uh, and then, you know, in the background, we also had, uh, uh, you know, the various uh, Mendel's law, etc. getting more uh, important importance during this period <clears throat> in the 1930s in that phase. So during that phase, we had many scientists uh, who came together and uh, came up with this idea of uh, synthetic theory. So it was in a, in a way uh, kind of a synthesis between Mendel's. Uh, genetics and Darwin's theory, which resulted in what we call today as neo-Darwinism or the synthetic theory of evolution, right? So that is uh, the brief background of uh, the synthetic theory of evolution. Along with that, you'll also have to write about the contributors and briefly about their contributions. Uh, okay, so several anthropo, I mean, uh, evolutionists uh, contributed. So as I have already mentioned over here, you'll have to briefly explain about isolation, briefly explain about germ plasm theory and mutation, etc. They were all uh, synthesized together to what is known as today synthetic theory. So the modern synthetic theory of evolution is a result of work of number of scientists. Uh, who compiled the work of uh, other uh, biologists and evolutionists, etc. So some of the names that you have to mention over here, contributors may, uh, Dobzhansky you might have to mention, Fisher, Haldane, Civil Wright, uh, etc. So all of them have contributed and uh, wrote uh, several books, like for example, Stebbin in his book, uh, The Process of Organic uh, Evolution, discussed about the synthetic theory. So like that, you'll have to mention the names of the contributors, their books, etc. in the introduction. So since if it is asked for a 20 marker, almost one page of it can be dedicated to the context or background of uh, the synthetic theory. Then in the next page, you can come up with the three main aspect of this theory and explain it with the flowchart. So the three main aspect, as you all know, in synthetic theory is first the occurrence, production and the redistribution of variation. So how the variations were produced and redistributed. So you'll have to write about that. In that, you'll have to write about the mutation, genetic recombination, okay, genetic drift, gene flow, okay, hybridization, etc. So the mutation, genetic recombination, genetic drift, gene flow, and hybridization, all of that added variation, okay. Uh, within a population. So these variation led to new traits. Yes, so these led to new traits. On these uh, variations, natural selection acted. And the natural selection acted and led to fixation of particular certain gene. And some genes were 
eliminated some gene were selected by natural selection so those genes which were selected got fixed so this fixed a fixed gene is then later acted upon by the isolation that is initially geographical isolation and later your reproductive isolation so isolation leads to further difference in gene frequency within a population and ultimately giving rise to different species so these three things has to be explained in your answer so how variation occurs and how natural selection acts on those variation eliminating those which are undesirable and selecting those which are desirable and then further isolation okay so isolation will lead to the fixation of certain genes i mean uh, will lead to change in the gene frequency at the population level leading to reproductive isolation and then reproductive isolation will ultimately give rise to a new species so this is what you need to explain in your um, answer and then you will have to draw a flow chart something like this so new traits are introduced into the population into the species through mutation genetic recombination genetic drift gene flow and hybridization this new trait is acted upon by natural selection and natural selection leads to fixation meaning some are eliminated which are not favorable and those which get selected they get fixed okay then geographical isolation geographical when the species get isolated geographically and then they are exposed to new environmental factors there is further change in the gene frequency and then leads to reproductive isolation okay leading to the formation of new species so this is what is the synthetic theory so it is one of the most comprehensive theories to explain organic evolution today right uh, so you'll have to write about these three main aspects production and then natural selection and role of isolation so you also define evolution as a process of functional adaptation of organism by continuous production of variation and then acting upon those variation the natural selection leads to formation of different species so the change in gene frequency at population level which ultimately leads to formation of species so this is the essence of the synthetic theory so this is what you will have to write very simple okay so brief background as to why synthetic theory and the criticism of darwin's theory and then the briefly about the contributors to synthetic theories and briefly about their theories as such and then about the three main aspect of the theory that is variation natural selection and isolation so in this way uh, as the evolution as these forces act it leads to the formation of new species is that okay i hope uh, you understood uh, these aspect of uh, uh, synthetic theory this diagram has to be mentioned names books of uh, contributors also has to be written uh, if you write all these things you will be able to get very good marks in your answer okay for your answer okay so in the next video we shall discuss the anatomical changes in man due to erect posture i hope it was useful keep watching thank you